even though she's not officially that title. That title. That's great. Right. Gracias to ah, there. Hi, sir. Hi. How are you, Steve? How are you doing? Hey, you? <laughs> good, good, thanks. Uh, Ride back in Dallas last night, gave two talks at the TSG this morning, and here I am for your meeting. <laughs> I'm going to say, didn't I just see you yesterday? <laughs> yeah. I wish I was still there. I really do. Hi, Phil and Stu. How are you? Hey, 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 good. Hey, Prasad, how you doing? Hey, Brian. Good. Hi, Prasad. Hi, oh, hi, hey, Phil. Brian. How you doing, too? Good morning. We're Sorry, couldn't be there in person. No, it's only 11.30. Not quite hey, afternoon yet. Hey, Danielle. So, uh, Akash was, is, was planning to come. I suspect he's listening to the last talk because we're, of course, running over. Yeah. Hi, Steph. So, so, Brian, how would, you like to, how would you like to do this with the, uh, with the editorial board? Do you want to start with them first? Yeah, I think we should give them an update a little bit about what's going on and uh, where we are with uh, next year's uh, issues. And um, we probably should talk briefly about... Um, indexing uh, since the, the board needs to weigh in on indexing and um, um, in terms of how we want to do that process, I think. All right. Do you want to start? Um, sure. Is everybody, uh, are we ready to go? I, I think we should. All right. Well, I shall, I shall catch up and I can fill him in on anything that he misses. Okay. Well, uh, we're Kendall. Did we get an update on uh, Volume One, Issue Three? Is that coming out this week, or do we know? Um, I hope so. I have not heard back from production yet. Melinda's been trying to get a hold of them too for the past couple of days. So, I know um, Dr. Dunbar. I'm pretty sure turned in her proof. So I think we're only waiting for one more person. So it shouldn't be that much longer at all. I would think. Okay. Robbie has uh, also been turned his paper. So according to uh, Dr. Ayazi, all of the proofs are in. Okay. okay so then yeah. we should have an imminent, imminent release of issue three. Uh, issue four uh, is uh, been developed by Dr. Worrell and uh, and uh, Nikhil Kumta, who I think is scoping today based on his email. So issue four is well in the hopper. For next year, uh, we have been we invited Dr. Molina to be our guest editor for one of the issues. The first issue of our volume two, issue one, will be on parasophageal hernias, um, and everybody's already agreed uh, to those invitations. Uh, volume two, issue two, has Dr. Molina as guest editor, and that's going to be our full first full esophageal cancer issue. And uh, that looks to be like a fantastic, uh, very cutting edge version. Uh, we have had acceptances from about half of the uh, invited authors and uh, Kendall and I will, uh, as well as Daniela will, and Phil probably will be pushing the trees. Uh, we gave people till the end of next week to accept our offer or invitation. So, and then issue volume three, two, issue three, Currently in development uh, under Dr. Katz's direction with uh, Dr. Dunbar will be on achalasia. So those are so far the three themed issues for 2022. Brian, with, Brian can Kendall, can you show the contents real briefly of um, volume two, issue one, and then volume two, issue two, just so that Stuart, Prasad, and uh, Daniela can see them. Yeah, I can pull those up one sec. Yeah, while she's while she's talking, the goal over for volume two is to have smaller themed issues with increasing numbers of original research content as we get more original research submissions into the journal, because that's what's going to drive uh, indexing 
uh, over the next couple of years as we get ready to be indexed in PubMed. And so the more original research we have, uh, the better off we will be um, over time. And so we've encouraged uh, several folks to submit uh, papers that uh, they have either contacted myself about, uh, contacted Phil about, and I got um, some, Mike Ujiki contacted me yesterday about a, uh, he's putting together a consensus statement on Endoflip and he thinks, so he asked me what I thought about submitting it to Forget, and I said, absolutely, we want that. That'll be a high-end topic for citation for the journal. So Kendall, what did you got there? This is issue one. They came out in March. So can, we go, um, can you show the ones that are upcoming though for four issue four? The um spreadsheet. Yeah, we can go to the spreadsheet because at least people will get a sense of what the topics and the authors are. Okay, let me do that instead. Okay. Let me go up to the top. Is that okay? So you make it just a little larger. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I can see that. I know what's there. <laughs> well, you guys may have a big screen there. The rest of us who are in here can't see everything. All right, that's better. <laughs> that better? All right. So, so let's go down to issue, issue three, which is coming out, yep. is motility uh, that um, Kave and Shaheen had put together. And that will be released this week. Issue four for this year is on uh, GERD and obesity. And you can see the range of topics there that uh, have been uh, invited and put together uh, across uh, that role. And as you see, we start to have uh, original research in issue three. Uh, one of Dr. Gaiwali's papers was accepted and put into issue, actually, sorry, issue four, issue three, we'll have the first one with a, a brief communication issue four, we'll have the first original research, which will be Dr. Gaiwali's paper with an invited commentary uh, by a bariatric and thoracic surgeon, as well as a case report by Dr. Bonavinas. So we start to see in issue four this year, the first of several um, original papers coming into production here for us. These are all online already, but we'll be assigned to this, these issues as they go through issue five, Parasophageal hernia. Um, again, we'll have some original research that's uh, submitted by uh, my group, uh, a case report out of the Hopkins group, and um, and some uh, and a series of parasophageal hernia repairs, sort of standard fare. We we didn't go too far out, uh, but we do have a variety of folks across the country providing us with uh, manuscripts there. Issue, issue six, volume two. Note, uh, note the few of you that a fair number of how I do it, teach it. Um, uh, Brian will probably comment further that we'll, we're going to actually look to get people to submit those for peer review. But uh, as we move along in the themed issues, we're going to try and add them to, uh, to round out the issues. And then here's Dr. Molina's um, uh, guest editor issue, which uh, <laughs> folks that have emailed me separately from everybody have um, are pretty excited about some of the topics there. Um, and we finally found an appropriate topic for Dr. Stavropoulos um, that um, he's, quite, he's quite excited about now. So. <laughs> Amount of acceptance already. We just sent out the email a week ago, so that's pretty good. Yeah, uh, there's a couple that we need to chase down. Uh, and since you're there, I would chase down Steve Demeester. <laughs> okay. um, and Phil, we might have to have we might have to actually call Ken Wang to uh, let him uh, just chat with him, Phil, if you can, and uh, Daniela. Uh, I sent Dr. Bruns a separate email because we I had her email address typed in incorrectly. I corrected it and I sent her a separate email, but you might want to reach out to her and just chat with her briefly about that. Say, Prasad, is uh, Ken Wang still working? Yeah, he's, he's certainly cutting back. Uh, I was just about to say that 
if you need me to give him give him a reminder if you can send me the title via email brian then i can uh, ping him uh, I, I will do so yes absolutely yeah he's cut back his clinical time so uh, <clears throat> He's still eminently qualified to write what we asked him to do. So hopefully, um, he, uh, could you tell me what the topic is? Daniel, which What's one? that? Which one is his? His was the additional treatment for persistent disease after initial endoscopic therapy. Uh, okay. Yeah, Brian, if you can just send me an email, please. I will, I will ping him uh, this coming week. Okay. I will send you an email, Prasad. Thank you. Thanks. And then Phil, the one, the one, the one manuscript that we do not have a GI for, and perhaps since we have Stu and Prasad here, uh, the uh, we have a surgical perspective on the unhappy esoph gastric conduit issues, but we need a, a GI to provide some perspective on managing post esophagectomy patients who have GERD gastric outlook problems, uh, perhaps some concept of dumping. And um, we, we do not have an author for that particular one. And so I'm, I'm interested if uh, the GIs on the call have any suggestions for us. It'd be nice to have some like really practical suggestions because there is really nothing on it uh, published. You know, we don't want somebody to talk about dumping and all that. And we want to just practical suggestion. What do you do? What do you try first? And, and I think that would be a, a, a very good uh, paper, you know, if we go more on a practical and example-based manuscript. It would still be a review? It would still be a review, but it would be a more personal-focused approach to how you approach these problems because, okay. you know. Like problem-solving? Uh, yes. Uh, or so, okay. Okay. Yeah. You know, what tests would you, you know, if you thought you had a gastric outlet problem with the gastric conduit, what would, you know, are there tests that you would do? Would you use a gastric emptying? Would you consider G poem? Are there yeah. meds that you would try? You know, how do you manage the persistent dumping problem that some folks get? Um, okay. You, you know, the, the, those are all really good sort of, as Daniela said, practical, practical points that we'd love to hear about that, how, how folks manage those, because I'm pretty sure we all do it differently. Have we uh, tapped on uh, John Clark for uh, anything yet? Just maybe. Yes, we have. We've got him for uh, the current issue, I think. Okay. Yeah. Brian, I'm willing to maybe talk to a couple of my colleagues and see their level of interest. Can you also, in that email you send me about Ken, can you add this as well? And I can try to see. And if you could also give me a time, please, as in terms of when this would be due, that would be helpful. Sure, I can send that to you, Prasad. Uh, I'll send that one. I send the email for uh, for Ken, and the the due deadline for this is April twenty twenty two. So it's about six months from now. So we've got some time. Yeah, we have time. Okay, that yeah. that's good. That's good. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I'll, I'll put out some feelers as well on that. I mean, I, I don't know anybody who writes on this. So, you know, <laughs> that's. But uh, yeah. I'm sure somebody could. Thanks, Stu. No, uh, we we thought it. We thought it'd be ideal if there's just somebody who has uh, any kind of size practice that uh, yeah. might involve this. Yeah, let me think about it. Okay. Any comments on the uh, on the issues in general and uh, potential uh, thoughts for? Uh, uh, the final, uh, the final issue of year two. I mean, we'll float the achalasia topics when Carrie and I finish them. She's uh, probably on her way, but uh, thinking about what uh, we have put together. Um, you haven't done anything about the stomach. So gastroparesis, that's a you have an address. That's yeah. after paresis. Yeah. yeah, that's what multiplication. Now the question is, is that got enough meat for a whole issue? Anyway, think about it if you would. Um, what what we have uh, hoped to do is to publish 
the case report of the month. Uh, we'll, we'll try not to publish any more case reports than that for issues related to impact factor primarily. Um, I think it'd be nice to have letters. Some told letters help your citation index, um, I guess, because you self-cite. And um, not that you guys need to sit around and write letters, but uh, I think that would be a nice thing to add uh, to the journal. Uh, and then, uh, Brad. Yeah, Brian and, and Phil, uh, just wanted to ask a question because uh, Brian started off by saying that you're getting original research articles now. Um, my impression was that those things aren't nearly as good for impact factor as review articles, but does it make a difference as far as uh, uh, how we get uh, indexed in the in the um, in PubMed? It does actually, you know, we've been through the guidelines, Phil and I, at one of the last edit editors meetings, and uh, you need to have a fair amount of original research, scientific research that is peer reviewed and as part of that. And so we could use review articles, but we have not sent we have not sent these thematic art, invited articles out for peer review because Phil and I didn't think that that was sort of you know if you submitted a paper the invited reviews to and I sent it out for review I, I think you'd be thinking well what, why are you sending that out for review I'm the expert like <laughs> and so we well, you know we felt that was was uh, we felt that was important these will get cited no question particularly as we got as we've gotten better with development but one of the clear clear factors that helps us drive indexing is original research. So we do need to encourage the AFS membership uh, to submit their research to us. And, and Prakash uh, has been very good about submitting some stuff. Uh, lots of folks have submitted some stuff. It's, we have a number of things working their way through the review process currently uh, that has you know, that we originally set up as an editorial board and uh, we've refined a little bit to make it flow a little bit better. But um, we absolutely need original research papers. Now, if you, if you wrote a, a review paper and submitted it uninvited by us, then yes, that would be super helpful too, you know. And so I think what Phil and I are hoping to get away from over time is less invited articles because that doesn't help us as much as, as people submitting stuff to the I, journal. They do I help if, they do, one second, they do help if they're, if they're cited, but... Um, it was made very clear to us that we need we need to have you know probably more than half of our stuff original research to uh, to, to get a reasonable indexing factor. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, no problem. So I just want to say that I had several manuscripts that I've been invited to write, and then they go to peer review. So I understand that it's always I always a little bit of surprise, you know, when that happened, and they say your master has been accepted or whatever, or they send out send back some revision to do and i'm thinking you invited me to write this what is going on but they do that pretty commonly so it's something that we might want to consider especially if it's our own you know if you invite me to write a manuscript i'm okay to be peer review it, like it it happens uh for other journals and if that happens and that increase our chances of being in this set, i think we should do it so for public one of the criteria is to have at least 28 manuscript, whether it's a review or original article that has been externally peer reviewed. So we can consider sending these reviews even to some, I'm not say, saying ghost reviewer, but someone that in our institution, so to meet that criteria. Uh, I, the, 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 original, the original thought to you know, extend Brian and my thoughts were, we were also asking people to write articles on 60 day and 90 day notice to get them peer reviewed and to send back even a cogent acceptance, as you well know, would have meant that we would just have probably produced our first issue now. Yeah. So uh, I think as we evolve, we might you know, consider a trial balloon as sending some things out, but um, I think that's that's an evolution. And look, we're not in a super rush to get indexed. I mean, uh, you know, we want to have a product that's got quality for the membership first uh, and foremost. But 
uh, you know, some pretty decent stuff presented orally uh, this, this week. There were six oral presentations. I'd say four of them were probably worth consider, you know, considering um, uh, of reasonable quality. Phil, can you make a comment? You may make a comment, of course. A uh, couple things. I, I like the idea of sending out um, invited reviews for peer review, particularly if there is no, if we are beyond that time pressure phase and it actually also helps at a later date with PubMed indexing, I, I would support that. Um, Second of all, I had a question uh, for you and Brian. In the um, manuscript section, the original research manuscript section, do we have a category of brief communication? Because I may have, I may have something that uh, I could put in, just checking to see. Yes, there, there is a brief communication section that we put in as one of the submission categories. And okay. in fact, the first paper, the first paper coming out in the issue three, the original paper is a brief communication. So, uh, yeah, those are definitely allowed. And the there, you know, we've we've got on the on the submission guidelines, all the correct submission types in there. They're all described with word counts and everything. OK, uh, that's something that we spent a lot of time this past fall or this past summer working on to try to get those submission guidelines to look um, to look correct. Okay, and well, that might that might allow me to submit something as well. So, um, I think those are those might be good starts in addition to the full original manuscript as well. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I know I could just comment the uh, you know the rush for indexing. I think to get people to submit original research, um, it's going to be difficult until we're indexed. You know, I think that uh, for young people who are submitting that they want to build up their CV, right? Uh, you know, they want to do it on a journal that that has indexed. And uh, so, I, I personally think we should get to that as soon as we possibly can. You know, get indexed as soon as we can. Well, you know, we'll, we'll certainly take under advisement the uh, you know the send out invited articles for peer review. Um, I'm sensitive to both sides, um, and um, uh, I, I suspect, Brian, there might be a way to do it without um, putting us in jeopardy of having too many caustic or negative comments um, that would make it look bad if we accepted them anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, you know, Phil, I think one of the things we could be inclined to do. <laughs> well, one of the things that we could do over time is is hand select a, a handful of them as they go through and just send them out for review. You know, uh, I do think the ones that are how I do it and how I teach it can go out for external review fairly easily because I think there's always good comment when you're talking about those ones. But I think if we randomly selected, a, you know, a handful of papers over time to go through, we would get to that, you know, that that 28 paper criteria fairly quickly that have all been peer reviewed. And so if we selected a handful each issue, then we would be probably pretty good. Oh, we're lost, right? Hey, uh, Brian, can the editorial board peer review? Um, actually, the editorial board can review. The editorial team, meaning Carrie, Ginny, myself, Phil, Shaheen, Steph, Kave, and Nikhil cannot apparently because we are so heavily involved. So we are not allowed to be part of the peer review process. But we could tap the editorial board to review for us because I think they would be considered, you know, arm's I length. Know, Brian, I think you just tell the editorial board these are invited manuscripts. We invited these people to write them. We need to peer review them for indexing. And so people keep an eye and be nice and do an, a peer review without rejecting them. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, we're a team. We're, we do this as a team and we do it the right way. Yes. Yeah. And we appreciate that. I think within the confines, uh, we, uh, Sage is um, quite rigid. Uh, in holding us to what 
their legal interpretation of the COPE rules are. Um, but I will certainly take it under advisement and clearly um, we're delighted that you all have volunteered and have been engaged and committed. Um, but we also don't want to overwork people. So I think we'll balance all that out and uh, we'll talk about it going forward. But um, there seems to be a comfort level from people who write invited articles that they wouldn't be insulted if it were peer reviewed. Um, I, and um, I guess if we select the peer reviewers correctly who understand what the issue is, then we won't get too many nasty people uh, with an ax to grind because we didn't ask them to write. Well, you know, Phil, I think, I think this is part of us, you and I, sitting down with Kendall, designing a plan that gets us to indexing, right? So if this is one of our strategies, we just need to make sure that the folks that we're tapping on the shoulder to review uh, and the authors are aware that, you know, you might random, you might be selected for a, a review process because that's how we're getting to, to this point of indexing. And so, you know, as you and I start to think about indexing more, we just need to outline how we're going to do this process very carefully so that we don't get uh, jammed up with Sage and uh, we're still above board and get to our ultimate goal, uh, which is which is being indexed. So, um, so I, I think all great suggestions. I agree with Phil. I, I appreciate you guys all being willing to sort of review some things. And uh, I think it's for Phil and I to sort of sit down and make sure we can design a process based on all the rules that he and I have been given to, to achieve this process. And so, uh, Kendall, that's got to be one of the topics for an upcoming meeting as we try to sort this out, or maybe a separate one for just you and I and Phil to sort out and, and pitch a process as, uh, to the editor's team and then to the editorial board to make sure everybody's in agreement. Yeah, I'd like to pull up the um, indexing sheet. It shows the criteria for PubMed on there, if you want to see that. Sure, that would be great. I, I think that, uh, I mean, this is incredibly helpful for, for me and uh, and I'm sure for Brian too. Uh, and Brian, it seems like uh, when we get comments back from invited authors that they're delighted to participate and help the journal, um, that also will probably give us an opening to say, you know, we're trying to get indexed so that you all feel comfortable submitting, you know, original research. So I hope you're also comfortable that we're going to send your manuscript out for peer review. I think it can work. You know, frankly, anytime I've ever been invited to uh, to write a review article, it's been reviewed. I mean, this I was relieved this one wasn't, you know, but uh, I think people well, expect to have it redone. Actually, it was reviewed, Stu, but we just didn't feel like, you know, we could add much, so we took it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I, I meant, yeah, in the peer review process, I mean, I, understand. I wouldn't have been offended in any way if you had sent the thing out, to, you know. Well, uh, but I think you're absolutely right. If you let the reviewers know that, hey, look, you know, this is an invited review, let's, you know, this is... Let's be gentle. Uh, I think that people will respond to that. If I could just say one one more thing, and I'll, I'll shut up for a minute. Uh, my only concern, and I don't have a great solution for this, so I would say that we have a couple of goals here. One is we want to be indexed. So to get indexed, you tell me we have to have uh, original research, and that's great. Uh, the, my worry about that is that this is going to be, you know, the the last bastion, of, you know, when it's been rejected from everything else, then it goes to AFF. Um, I, I don't know how to get around that until we do get indexed. Once we get indexed, I think we can be a lot more selective. But um, I, th I think that getting indexed is really important to get people to submit. And then we just don't want to get the, you know, the, the really low tier research. What one? Yeah, I, I can tell you we've we've rejected a bunch of low tier research just simply because it's low tier having right. seen it picked up by even lower tier journals that are indexed uh, already because i i saw one of the papers we rejected get published somewhere else and i was like wow okay um <laughs> yeah but i uh, i think the the willingness of folks the attitude that i'm hearing is is sort of different than what phil and i were anticipating you know phil and i've had these conversations 
about invited reviews and and we very much were like well i think people would be offended if we sent them out for review but what you guys are telling us is is slightly well actually is very different than what our anticipated thought process was around these invited themed articles so that actually is helpful to know and as long as we let people know that these articles need to be that will be reviewed as part of our process then i think we're okay so that gets us because the review manuscripts right. the invited reviewed articles still count as original original publication so i think we'd be okay in that respect too so that's right. it's good to hear that the attitude is very different and what your expectations were compared to what phil and i were thinking was was going to be the uh the right. Um, team, another uh, strategy that other journals have um, that we might think about using is having uh, papers that have been rejected by higher um, index journal that uh, have provided a reviewer answer. And so you could potentially advertise by saying we can do a fast track publication if you show us a review, the peer review is already being done and you show us the answer to the peer review and then you can have like a peer review that is like simplified in a way if they have asked all of the uh, questions requested in the previous review. And I know uh, this is of the SAFIs do that routinely, for example. Uh, so you can go for fast tracking publication and that might help too. You know, if you have some papers that have been rejected but they're good, uh, to get fast track publication here. The only challenge with that approach is it usually through the same publisher. And Sage doesn't have any high impact GI or Sage journals. In fact, when you look at their 600 journal they cover, the highest impact factor in the Sage market is Sage, which is a pretty low key journal. Right, but disease of the Azafis don't have either. So they accept from external, for example. They accepted uh, a paper that was rejected by some higher tier journal externally. And if you have already the review done and you answer the question, you go to a fast track peer review and then pass for publication. So that could be something that we can advertise, you know, for the first year or two. But even, even later on, while the impact factor is low, whenever we get indexed, uh, you can keep that as a potential advertisement tool. That's an interesting I, suggestion, Daniela. I think certainly I something for us to continue to add to our 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 process of getting towards indexing. So uh, I think that's not that's a great idea. I would second that approach to. Um, I think particularly in the initial period, um, there are journals who actually encourage um, authors to share previous author uh, reviewer comments. Um, it doesn't mean that we would reduce our, um, you know, standards by any means, but I think it, it does give us, it could give uh, authors a faster track to get published. Sometimes um, the comments themselves are not necessarily indicative of why the uh, manuscript was rejected. And I think if authors come in with a response to some of the prior reviews, it, it, it could give us a good sense of whether this should be something that should ultimately be accepted or not. So I would second that. Yeah, you know, I think that's great because for, for both sides, you know, annals of surgery, if you're being rejected, they only take 10% of the papers. And um, those are some very good articles that you might review that are still rejected. And then the authors are like, well, where do I want to put this? And I, and I think the same goes for CGH, uh, the Red Journal. There are papers there that get rejected quite readily and uh, would be appropriate for our journal and still carry significant weight. So, you know, I yeah, think absolutely. we need to figure out how to advertise that carefully and uh, and integrate that into our, our process. So, uh, Kendall, I'm assuming you're taking some notes so we can sort of talk about this at the next editor's meeting so that we can sort of work this into the process. Yeah, I have a recording, or this is being recorded, and I'll also send the recording to the rest of the editorial team who did not make it, just so they're filled in on everything, too. Thank you. For, you know, for Saad and, uh, and, and Stuart, um, in addition to uh, Kerry, who has plenty of opportunity to comment, you know, my impression always has been that the, you know, the GI trail for um, 
getting an article published uh, never really got exciting after you got past RED and CGH and, you know, maybe you slid over to APT, but without offense to DDNS and J. Clint Gastro, not a lot of places for us to go. So that might be a, a nice a nice option to, uh, you know, the red, the red journal goes to clinical, uh, you know, their, their translation yeah. journal, but yeah. we, could, we could probably uh, sneak some of those our way if they were any good. Yeah, yeah, no, like you say, if there's a sister publication, they, they, there are journals that do that automatically, but I think it's a great idea. Um, just as you say, uh, a lot of what's rejected would be very appropriate, it's good stuff. Yeah, reject it on priority issues. That's all. Yeah, I mean we'd have to send those out again, but it's a long time to get them back. Right. Because they'd be sent out with a previous response. Yeah. I think that's great. That's a terrific idea, and you know you can you can cite our our articles, and we're going to have to figure out how to publicize that too. Um, they are citable, even though they're not indexed. So. Uh, Anybody in the NFS can cite an article that they've read by from our journal, and uh, you know we, we will certainly encourage that too as we go. I mean, the good thing about our author group is they are all publishing a lot, so mm -hmm. I like to that they would cite these papers. Right. But since we get to some sort of indexing system, at this point, the Google Scholar can people can find us that way. We need to heavily invest on social media. Yes. That's the way people give us visibility so yes. people see our papers. And... Well, we have our own Twitter handle now for uh, those of us who you know, know how to retweet. I can handle that. <laughs> 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 Pretty soon I'll learn how to actually write a tweet and, uh, <laughs> and send it out. And uh, 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 Affinity has... Uh, uh, upped our game of social media in the society to begin with. So, you know, I think between the, um, you know, anybody who participates in doc matters uh, in their responses can comment on when there are articles that people might refer to in the journal, quote unquote. Um, so I think this can all work. And um, um, I must say, I'm quite happy that you all decided to come on this call because it's really quite helpful. Anyway, I think we can pull down those uh, those requirements because people have a chance to look at them. But um, Shaheen, I think we just got like, you know, really closer to being able to do this. Uh, Dr. Ayazi has been uh, kind of pushing us from the, work, the minute we said hello to make sure we get indexed. So um, uh, I think we're moving in the right direction. Um, so Brian, what up, what else do we want from our uh, our editorial board as we continue through this? Uh, I think we've covered the key points that we we needed to at this point in time. We got the input we needed on the reviews. We got our input on uh, our plans for indexing, which I think were the two key things that we had to get before. Uh, a number of board members. And uh, when Kendall sends out the transcript of this or the minutes, we certainly can get other feedback for those who were unable to attend about the plans. And then I, I think you and I have some work to do is, is really what it's going to amount to. We've had plenty of work till this point. We'll keep working. So me, to, just to wrap you up reasonably yeah. quickly, Brian and I had originally decided that it would um, uh, perhaps not be taken very well if we sent out invited reviews for peer review. And uh, it doesn't seem that um, our editorial board completely agrees with that. Nobody seemed to be insulted at the process of uh, having their invited article peer reviewed, which will clearly help us get indexed a lot quicker. And since we now have lead time, uh, you know, the, the sixth issue has a deadline of April of 2022. So in the future now, people who will be invited to write will not be given as little time as we gave you uh, or everybody else on this call, but- uh, um, You, I'm so just happy I just <laughs> So me said he was happy he got in before the peer reviews. Uh, everybody else said people the call. Right, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So I have a quick question, suggestion. There is a new society in Europe, European society of Forga, which is almost like a sister society for us. Mm -hmm. And their first meeting will be in November in Austria. 
the president is Bonavino, does it make sense to establish some sort of relationship? Because that's a group that they publish a lot, all of them. So, so that's a consideration at the, at the board level for the AFS. Um, so uh, the answer is uh, yes, but... Um, journal, do they publish? They don't have a journal. Yeah. The question is, is, do they have a journal? If they don't they, have a they, journal, they, that'd they, be a great they don't. journal post. So, so that that's in addition to the ESG. That's come yes, up. Yeah. That's come up wow. for you know at the board as to whether we want to capitalize on that right. to uh, in some way link with them. And yeah. uh, the thing is, Bonavina already has a journal and also his office. So there's a chance that they keep that as their formal journal. So it's opportunity for us to just take over. Yeah, but Phil, I think you need to take that back to the the uh, the AFS board, which is, you know, it would be great if 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 Forget could be the dominant journal and that it was the official publication of the AFS, official publication of the European Forget Society, because there's some big names on that. You know, Shiraz Makar was emailing me the other day about the uh, the um, European Forget Society, and I saw Luigi on it. Uh, you know, if there, what we don't need is uh, n more journals with the diluted quality re papers. So we need to have stronger Forga journals with higher quality research would be better. Um, and so whether Luigi's, you know, interest in that, I don't know, but I suspect that he does because he does submit a lot of stuff to uh, North American journals. Um, so, you know, I think the board needs to put that on top of their agenda because that's going to be huge. Um, and I suspect it's very much the same thought process we had over here that Luigi and those guys had over there, which is we're not really getting very far. So we need to create our own sort of uh, society and, and how we all evolve to this versus becoming members of OESO or disease of the esophagus still remains to be to me to be a little unclear. So now we have all these these esophageal gastric societies that um, are, are all out there, and um, I'm not I'm not sure all of them will survive over the next ten years, but we'll see what happens. OESO, I, I would predict, will dissolve. Uh, Robert can't. They're not easily. He might not easily find an heir. Um, certainly in the, with the lack of industry support across the world, that's anyway, I don't think we need to digress in that, but your points well taken, Brian, and I'll bring it up Sunday morning because we have a debrief meeting tomorrow morning at eight o'clock and, uh, uh, this will, uh, probably move to the forefront of, uh, uh of next steps. Um, after a pretty solid meeting, I think there'll be enough excitement to uh, to keep moving. Uh, okay, so um, we will send out to you um, uh, when uh, officially finished our uh, our um, article title descriptions and our uh, written review process, which will. Uh, which is uh, continually being refined with uh, Brian, the lead on this. Uh, thankfully, knowing my administrative skills uh, are weak um, and uh, he's been kind enough to take the lead on that. Yeah, and um, we're trying to get the website to be a little bit more friendly. Uh, Kendall has been uh, as helpful as any human being can be with a very, very tough crew. Um, uh, I would blatantly say Sage is difficult to be nice and, um, but I guess they're trying to uh, make things work a little bit better for us. And, uh, pretty exciting that, uh, you know, we're uh, approaching, uh, the end of year one and we'll actually get four issues out. So, um. Uh, we can't thank all of you enough for for writing and uh, for giving us input. But uh, you know, whatever this conversation has stimulated you to suggest, uh, just uh, email us. And actually, you know, Kendall, without giving you more work, 
um, which may give you more work. Um, I think the editorial board probably needs to have the editorial office email so that uh, if they had an if they had an idea, not that I mind getting emailed directly, nor does Brian, but uh, we have a lot of emails like everybody does. So if we can filter um, through a central uh, repository, that might also help our um, our record keeping, so to speak, since Sage is uh, they can't seem to be detailed about getting things produced, but they can sure be pretty detailed about what we don't do. <laughs> so um, let's go from there. <clears throat> You know, Phil, one of the things we should clarify with the board is the plan when for year one was four issues. There was a suggestion for year two to go to six, but Phil and I kept it at four. Um, I, it, does anybody have a thought about year three? Because I still think unless we can continually fill uh, more original papers and research, I would still keep it at four issues for the time being, because that will actually allow us to have full, full issues, uh, head towards indexing first before we go up to six issues a year. Um, but, uh, I'm op open for discussion. Do go ahead. No, I think that sounds, I think Brian said it very well. I, I, I agree with that totally. I think until, until we can get more selective. I think after year three, maybe we will be able to get a lot more selective. Hassan? Gone. What, what is us, how can we, um, just thinking out loud, but how can we use this meeting now for our journal? I mean, is there any, and that we can use or any of these stuff? There are a lot of very interesting talks and uh, I wonder if, uh, you don't know, come up with some special issue or. Well, the plan, the yeah. plan, Daniela, was for Phil and I to look at the list. And uh, after hearing all the talks, we we're going to email the podium presented research and encourage them to submit their research to us. I think the question, Phil, I, that we didn't address was for those invited talks that people gave. Can those folks turn those into uh, a review article, a manuscript that would be potentially publishable too, uh, which is what I think Danielle is getting at. So uh, I do think if, since you folks are there uh, and I'm only online, you know, if there are folks that you see or talks that you think would be a great article, those are folks that we really want to approach and sort of encourage them to write something and submit it to the journal. So we had a basic plan, Phil and I, but uh, I think Danielle is suggesting we enlarge that plan. Just thinking about maybe something a little special. What if we do like a supplement uh, journal uh, uh, that, is, that is just like even online, that is not really paper, that is just an online issue. We don't do anything paper. Right. Well, sure. That's true. <laughs> we don't. There's, but, a, there's, but, there's, there's some copies of the, uh, of the first issue that have been purchased. And uh, off the record, you can look at your... Uh, you can look at your mail because you're probably all going to get a souvenir. Yeah. But would, uh, they, as would, a thank would you. the AFS board be interested in having the talks webcast or somewhat uh, uh, access through? I mean, are they going to do like on demand of these talks for this meeting or are they just done? And if they're done and there is no on demand option, uh, there's a lot of people didn't come to the meeting that could potentially watch these talks through the journal. So you can have like a little bit of a special issue uh, uh, that is linked to the meeting where you have a, a little blurb of a summary of what the talk is about. You can ask these people that give the talk to, uh, to write a little summary. And then there's a link to actually the talk. <coughs> and, they can, and people can watch the talk through the journal. So I, I uh, you know, I think Daniela, that's an, a great idea because it just drives more awareness uh, based on what you're doing to the journal and the journal site and the papers. Um, I think Sage has the ability to to host that uh, through the journal site. We'd have to talk to them about that, but worth an investigation, I would think, because part of this is all to drive awareness. Um, 
It also is to drive sort of social media that Shaheen is to just sort of in, in, enhance the, the focus of the AFS and uh, awareness of what we're doing. So, uh, so um, we, should, we should look at that. Yeah, so, well, I mean, Sage, I'm sure would be happy to sell a supplement and we might work, <clears throat> we might work through industry for that purpose. I like all those ideas. Um, I think the biggest issue is, I should say the biggest thing is not getting a whole bunch of additional invited articles, but trying to get people to basically quote unquote, take the risk of submitting a review on their own based on their talks. So it might be a little bit haphazard. Um, uh, or we could get Kate to uh, break some arms and then... Uh, well, again, they, but I, they become I, invited reviews then, right? Well, that's, that, you know, I want to stay away happen. from, I want to invited. stay away from invited reviews, unless we just did a flat out supplement, which would be, you know, would well, be fine, could, but, we and then we them. would send that out for peer review. Can we do, like every you know for each of our issues we've got three of the you know like three of the talks like you know special section yes. you think, know so proceedings of the or AFS could be, you know an unsaid <laughs> request to the moderator because there's one surgeon one gastroenterologist that they have they are going to submit a review article on their own not invited for their session for that two hour two and a half hour session highlighting the points <laughs> and the discussion that followed yeah. included in it and laying out, you know, the question that needs to be answered. That might be rather than having every talk, oh, we right. have just with eight models. Again, you know, that's asking a lot. But yeah. On well, the first annual meeting, they had all the talks said people could go watch and yeah. all the talks will be said. Yeah. All the talks that, that'll be yeah. easy. The talks are going to be saved. Everything's been recorded. The entire meeting is recorded. The live stream uh, is recorded, so people will be able to go back. And my guess is, is you know, for members, you'll be able to access anything on demand. So I, I uh, so um, one thing that you have to be a little careful, sorry to interrupt, is when we put it in the format of the journal from indexing and sample is a cyclical work. So it can kill out this uh, impact factor because nobody's gonna cite those things. So it will be okay. zero citation, but you have one paper that potentially cited that. I see. Okay. So interesting. But say that again. again. So if you put it in the format of the journal, then when they are calculating the citation of the journal, it would consider the citable work. But nobody would cite those things. So it's going to kill our impact factor. So at least at the beginning, it's not bad. We prioritize citation, indexing. So when we start with citation, if I can show three, then those things is not going to damage us in the future. Yeah. How long does it take normally for a journal to get cited? Minimum like two years. Minimum two years, and yeah. we're trying to do it in three, at the, if we can. Okay. So I, so talked to one of the, I talked to one of the research presenters. I was going to try and catch some of the other ones. Um, and I talked to the, I think Dr. Burke yesterday. She had a really good presentation yesterday. Mm -hmm. I was like, well, what would you submit to us? So, but I think a moderator summarizing the session, if they are willing to, because it takes a lot of time to write their editorials on that. The other thing is, you know, one thing we could do that when we review the articles, the peer review process, can we make suggestions to, you know, hey, can you quote, you know, do you think we should add a reference from our previous in the article? I know that's underhand. No, that's, that's no. probably <laughs> legitimate. <laughs> That, so that's you know, part you didn't of this one. You could have quoted this one. Totally. This is a review. I've done many of a review where I've wondered why they didn't cite my paper. Well, that, well that's the same thing. <laughs> and I, you know, put it in there. Yeah, I, <laughs> I, I, want, I want to get an H index like Moyetti. <laughs> <laughs> I so, want to be at infinity. So I'm just thinking <laughs> it, would, it would be good for us for you know for our own articles we do that. But I'm just saying that if we had a on the editorial board, at least on the repertoire of knowing what all is there, maybe suggest that hey, this reference could be included or not. I've already cited some of the papers of the issue one. I think that's what happened in the World Journal of Gastroenterology. I think they were making, you know, like trying to get people to cite. So it can't be, I don't think it can come from 
It should uh, come off. It should be just. It has to be very, yeah. yeah. So, no, 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 I agree. It had to be because then, afterwards, yeah. otherwise we're going to get found out. Yeah, that's right. right. <laughs> that's what yeah, I have to say. Can I just, just ask a question? Because obviously, for the first year here, you've had themed issues, which are wonderful, and that was the way to go. When are you going to get away from the themed issue? A lot of this will be a lot easier to deal with if you don't have to stick to a theme. Yeah. When we have enough to fill an issue without it. I mean, the plan that Brian and I have, which uh, uh, both uh, Kerry and, uh, and, and, and Ginny have uh, agreed to, is to start to shrink them as soon as we can and, you know, make them shorter as we go. Right, Brian? I mean, that's kind of what we wanted to do, you know? Yeah, you could see that in Daniela's issue, we started to shrink the number, you know, we're down. We, we were historically having 12 invited review or articles. And in Daniela's issue, we've only gone to essentially eight with the how I do it. And uh, and so we, you know, the Acalasia one, I think should get, we got to get under around eight invited. And then over that course, by the time we hit year three, those themed issues should be, you know, less than five articles, I would think, just for a focused topic or a focused review, we're going to take on, you know, five papers and then have mostly, you know, original stuff going on, I hope. No, absolutely, because people will thing, certainly other... like it. I mean, I mean, it doesn't have to be themed. The people will like review articles, and, you know, it, it doesn't have to be one, one theme. Right. Yeah. I, mean, one of the uh, things, I agree, Stu. One of these things that we could do is, you know, the, the, the Red Journal has put out RFAs for, you know, negative articles, this and that. We can put out an RFA to the membership that we're looking for, you know, review articles related to the theme that we want and also see what pops up too. I mean, there are a couple of ways that we can stay themed and uh, maybe have some original stuff. But, um, all right, so um, all of you have uh, been more than generous by giving us an hour of your time. Um, so in terms of the editorial board, if, uh, you're welcome to stay. If uh, we need to do a little bit more work, Brian, we can. But uh, otherwise, uh, I do thank all of you for for coming and uh, for the mediocre lunch we gave the local people. Uh, I apologize. Uh, hopefully, you guys at home got better food than we did. But um, you can't beat the price. <laughs> hey listen you gotta give kudos to you guy i i would not have believed that it was possible to do what you've done here with this thing so congratulations I, I, that's heartfelt it really thank you and uh thanks Stu. i'm not sure we believed we could get it done either until the until it was up and running <laughs> yeah. but, uh, anyway uh we, we 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 mostly uh have to thank uh, uh the uh the SAEs and the AEs, uh, particularly the the guy over here, for uh, keeping us all honest and uh, staff. Uh, um, I think I'm going to send you guys out to uh, Nikhil and Kave and uh, make sure they uh, work as hard as you do. Anyway, Brian, do we want to do anything else now or? Um, no, I think we're good. You know, I think we got an upcoming meeting, just the editor editorial team. Um, we, you and I have some work offline to do with Kendall. And, uh, but I think, you know, last thing we want to all do is spend more time in a meeting. So it's nice to see all of you. I wish, certainly wish it could be there, but uh, I also have to get a, a kid up to the first, uh, the first hockey game of the season. So we're in the preseason. So I got to <laughs> run out and get a kid up to a, a hockey game. Go get him, man. That's more yes. important than yes. anything we're doing. Have That's fun, right. guys. <laughs> we'll, see you, uh, we'll see everybody Bye. soon. Have a great day. Bye. 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 Thank, Bye. You, Bye. Thank, Thank you, everybody. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Okay. Thanks, everyone.